Welcome to our lecture on descriptive statistics. This lecture is long, and so you'll see that it's in several parts. In this lecture, we are um, obviously talking about descriptive statistics. We're going to learn different techniques and metrics and graphical techniques for summarizing uh, data that's in front of us as opposed to inferential statistics, which as you know from the previous lecture, means we want to take the data that we have in front of us and uh, draw conclusions about the larger population that the sample data came from. Over here, we're only interested in the data in front of us. We, want, we might want to measure, let's say, the performance of a class, uh, the performance of a unit um, in a company, uh, we're not making any larger generalizations uh, to, the, to the larger world. Um, we have a lot of data. Data sometimes comes in, in huge numbers and huge data sets. We could have thousands of pieces of data maybe and more. Um, so how do we uh, take this data and, and address uh, the information that's in it? Uh, you don't want to just hand someone a huge database and say, oh, here, uh, take a look at this. Those are my descriptive statistics. No, you really want to summarize this data in some meaningful way. So it's not just raw data. So it is information. We also know from the previous lecture, we've got uh, different levels of data, various levels of numerical data. We have categorical data. And we work differently with different levels of data. Um, we're going to look at me some quantitative metrics. And we'll look at some. Uh, but not all uh, graphical techniques. Um, we will learn various techniques for um, summarizing and describing our data, whether the data is numerical or categorical. Um, with uh, categorical data, what do we do? We know we can only have frequencies, maybe percentages, maybe we can draw pretty pictures. Um, we're going to look more at graphical data in a later lecture, a later uh, part of the descriptive statistics lecture that's totally dedicated to grouped data where we use frequencies. Um, along the way, we will see some graphical methods, but we're not going to do a lot of the simple stuff um, that you are basically born knowing. Well, I'm not going to ask you to draw pretty pictures, a, a pretty pie chart uh, to show how the data is broken up. Um, that's not our, what we consider our job here. What you see in front of you is pretty much an outline of uh, most of the descriptive statistics lecture, no matter how many parts it's broken up into. Uh, most of it is going to focus on uh, data that comes in a single variable. First, we're going to uh, study various measures of location. These are metrics that are used to locate our data on the scale of real numbers. Um, then we're going to look at measures that have to do with how far apart the values are from each other. Um, we're going to look at a bunch of other stuff, uh, measures of shape, how the distribution uh, is distributed. Maybe it has a peak, maybe it's slanted. Um, we're going to look at uh, some ways of summarizing all these measures at once. And very, very useful, we're going to look at standardizing data, which you know a little bit about already, I think. Um, and we're going to work with it in a certain way that's going to stand us in good stead later on in the semester. And I hope you see that very, very soon. OK, we're going to look at measures of location. You'll see that there are two kinds, but right now we're going to look at measures of central tendency. In other words, the central location. This is kind of a measure that uh, summarizes the whole data set. Sometimes you just want one number that kind of represents the entire data set. And these include the mean, obviously an average. The mean is an average. An average is another way of summarizing. Like, how do you do this semester? Well, I took 10 quizzes and my average was. The average is a measure of central tendency. It's kind of a summary. You might want to use the median, all right? That's another one. And sometimes we use the mode. Those are the three we discussed in this course. There are a few others, but only these three are discussed. OK, let's look at uh, the sample mean. The sample mean is the sum. Notice that symbol, the sigma. 
sigma xi. And again, if you forgot what it means, that's sigma. Just go back to the boot camp. We explain how to use it. But there's an explanation right here too. The sum of the xi is x1 plus x2 plus x3, etc. You're just basically summing like a column of numbers or a row of numbers. So we take the sum of the xi over n. That gives us the sample mean. Let's look at two examples. Okay, the first example, you've got 1, 2, 2, 4, 5, 10, and you're asked to calculate the sample mean. N is 6, there are 6 observations, and you sum up the numbers, you sum up that, this is a, uh, a row of numbers, we sum up the row, we get 24 is the sum, 24 over 6 is 4.0, that's the sample mean. Example 2, okay, here we have 5 numbers, 1, 1, 1, 1, 51, okay, N is 5. We sum that uh, row of numbers, we get 55, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 51, we get 55. 55 over 5 is 11.0, that's the sample mean. Note that the sample mean is affected by extreme values. That, one, that 51 there suddenly changed the mean by a lot. One big, one huge number can change the mean. The median is basically the middle value of the data after you've ordered it. You have to order the data, which let's do it from lowest to highest. You can go either way, but generally I like to do it lowest to highest. Order the data, okay? So now the data is in a, in a specific kind of order, lowest to highest. Now the median is going to be the middle value, okay? Which basically means that half the values in your data set are below it and half are above it. That's why the median can also be seen as the 50th percentile. We're going to learn about percentiles shortly. But the median is the 50th percentile, half below, half above. Now, how do you, now what do you do? After you order the data, and again, order the data, if n is odd, the mean is actually the middle value. So if n is an odd number, like 7, 9, 11, okay, the, the median is the middle value. If n is even, it has to be, you've got to average the two middle values, then you have two middle values, average them, and the average of those two, that becomes the median. Okay, here's an example of the median. Okay, look at the data in front of you. 0, 2, 3, 5, 20, 99, 100. It's been ordered, lowest to highest. Okay, n is odd, n is 7. There are 7 numbers there. Okay, since there are 7, the middle value, the fourth one, is is the median, 5. Now look at 5 carefully. Three of the values in your data set, 0, 2, 3, are below it, and 3 are above it, 20, 99, 100 above it. That's why you know you got it right. That is the median. The median is 5. And now things to know about it. The mean and the median are unique for a given set of data. There's one mean for a data set. There's one median. But what's interesting about the, the uh, median Notice if you change the 100, make it 5,000. Since the mean is really a position, it's the middle position, okay, nothing has changed. So even if the 100 becomes 5,000, the median remains 5. But what happens to the mean if you change the 100 to 5,000? It'll increase dramatically. So the mean is um, affected by extreme values. The median is a position, so you can have an extreme value. It's not going to change the median. Now let's look at example two. Okay, here we have n of six. There are six values there, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Now what you got to do, you have two middles, in effect, in the data set. So you got to take the average of the 30 and the 40, the two middles. Just take an average, 30 plus 40 over 2. And now the median is 35. Notice... 35 is not, one, is not one of your observations, but three of the values are below 35, 10, 20, 30, and three are above it, 40, 50, and 60. So again, that 35 is the median. Half of the data is below that value. Half the data is above it. What do we know about this measure, about the median? Uh, for one thing, as we saw already, uh, the median is not affected by extreme values like the mean. Uh, it's only affected by the number of observations because, as you saw, it has to do with the position, the middle value, the one that's exactly at the center of your data. Extreme values do nothing. That's one reason we like to use the median for 
income data, let's say, and also in your very in, of interest to you and to me, uh, exam scores. Uh, the second thing we know about the median is when you think about it, this should be obvious, if you pull a piece of data from your data set at random, any particular uh, data value pulled at random is just as likely to be greater than the median as less than the median. Sometimes that could be a nice uh, property. And finally, this is really more for those of you who are interested in going further in, let's say, maybe mathematical probability. Um, so yeah, everyone else, you can tune out till the next slide. Uh, the, the summation, mathematically, the summation of the absolute value of the differences around the mean, the deviations of any particular data value from the mean, if you take all of those, um, just the absolute value, because you don't want to look at uh, pluses and minuses, um, and add them all up, that's the smallest that it could possibly be. Mode is the value of the data that occurs with the greatest frequency. Look at the example below. You got one, 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 two, three, four, five. Now the one shows up three times, so that's the mode. Everything else only appeared once. Look at the next example. Five, 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 six, eight, ten, ten, ten. Now you have two modes. You can, it's, uh, again, it's not impossible to have several modes. In this case, you have two modes, the five and the ten, because they each showed up three times. And we call that a bimodal, two modes data set. Okay, let's look at some properties of the mode. The mode, unlike the mean and the median, which always exist, you may not have a mode, and it may not be unique. Look at the first problem. And if I ask you, what's the mode? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Well, it has no mode. Everything showed up once. There is no mode. Ten observations, there's no mode. However, there is a mean and there's a median, but no mode. Look at the next problem. The mode may not be unique, as we saw before. Look at that. You have, uh, there's a zero, and there's two ones, two twos, two threes, two fours, two fives, two sixes. So notice how many modes you got. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. They show up twice. You have six modes. Quantiles are measures of non-central location. Okay, you don't always want the center. You may want something that's not at the center. The most commonly used uh, quantiles, quartiles, which we'll discuss in this course, quintiles, used a lot by economists when they want to measure income inequality, deciles, and finally, percentiles. Let's try to understand quartiles. It's in the word quarter. So obviously, you're breaking something up into quarters. Four parts. You want to split your data. It's ordered data. You want to split it into four parts. Try to imagine you have this chocolate bar, a big chocolate bar, and you, want, you have four kids. You want to cut it up so you have four equal pieces. How many cuts do you need so you have four equal pieces? Well, the answer is always one less. You want four, you need three cuts, right? Smack look at, at the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. Okay, Q1 is the first quartile. What's true of the first quartile? It's actually the 25th percentile. 25% of the observations are smaller than Q1, 75% are larger. That's why another way to see the Q1, the first quartile, is it's the 25th percentile. Q2 is the second quartile. 50% are below it, and 50% are above it. In other words, it's the median. The second quartile is the median. It's also the 50th percentile. Finally, the third quartile, 75% of the observations are below it, are below Q3. 25% of the observations are above it, and that's why you can even call it the 75th percentile. Okay, we're going to look at a data set and see how we can get a quick and dirty approximation for the Q1 and the Q3. Look at this data set, 210, 220, all the way up to 270, 280, okay? You've got 10 numbers there, okay? And if I ask you to get the median, which, by the way, is Q2, you know it's if N is even, it's the average of the two middle values. So you take the average of 225 and 235. Your median is 230. Okay, so now the median is 230. You have five numbers below that value and five above it. Now take those five numbers and get the median of those. Pretend they're only five numbers. All the numbers below the median, only those, nothing else. Take the median of that. 
If you were to do that, again, you got five numbers starting with 210, ending with 225. So Q1 now is the third observation, or 225. Take the five numbers above the median. That's 235, 240, 250, 270, 280. Get the median of those five numbers, and that'll give you an approximation to Q3, and that becomes 250. This is the quickest way to get Q1 and Q3. It's an approximation you could do with a formula. In fact, Excel does it with a formula. and will get you a slightly different answer. But for a test or just for a, you need a quick answer, this is the way to go. Again, if you want to do it the correct way and you have a big data set, which is the way it really is in, in the world, you would be using Excel and it'll do it for you. Here's a problem. Uh, the company has 12 salespeople uh, selling computers. Um, we have um, the data for these 12 salespeople for uh, the most uh, recent uh, week for which data was collected, and that's sales per week. Uh, we want you to compute the mean, the median, the mode, and the quartiles. Uh, now, obviously, as you should know, the best way to do this is pause the video, pause the PowerPoint narration, do the problem, and then come back. Um, so here we are again. Um, how do we answer this question? Well, other than the mean, for all the other, uh, f uh, for the median and the quartiles, uh, we have to put the data in order. The mean and the mode, we could probably figure out without that, but the mode would be difficult. Uh, so we might as well just order the data, and you see the ordered data right there. The sum of all the sales for the week is 76 over the 12 salespeople. 76 divided by 12 is 6.33. So that's the mean, the average number of sales um, per um, per computer rep for the week was 6.33. The median, remember, is at the 50% mark. In the order data, what's the 50% mark? We have 12 observations, so it should be between the sixth and the seventh. Zero, two, three, four, five, six. That's the first half. Um, so the median is smack in between six and seven, or 6.5. Uh, the mode, well, there are two tens and just a single uh, instance of every other value. The mode is 10. Um, Q1, we take the lower half of the observations below the median and get the median of those. And that'll be between three and four. So Q1, uh, the first quartile, is three and a half. We do the same thing for the larger numbers, the, the half of the data set that's above the median. And uh, we're halfway in between the nine and the 10. Again, halfway in between uh, the third and the fourth observations. So that the Q3 is nine and a half. All right, let's look at some other quantiles. We're focusing more on quartiles in this course, but, and percentiles, but um, in other courses, you may hear the term decile. What is a decile? That's where you have nine cuts, essentially, and you uh, cut the data up into 10 equal portions. So the first decile is, is the 10th percentile, 10% below, 90% above it. The seventh uh, decile, 70% of the data is below it, and 30% is higher than it. Uh, sometimes we talk about quintiles in economics in particular, okay? So we look at quintiles. You need essentially four cuts, and um, you divide the, the data into five equal portions. So the first quintile, 20% below, 80% above. If you go to the uh, fourth quintile, 80% below, 20% above. In economics, very often we look at these quintiles, we look at the fourth quintile and we compare it to the first quintile as a measure of income inequality. Uh, percentiles is going to be the next slide. That's, you need 99 cuts. Imagine it's a long chocolate bar and you need 99 cuts. And guess what? You have 100 equal pieces. As you know, we need 99 percentiles to divide the data into 100 equal portions. Uh, very often we use percentiles for standardized exams like the SAT and tests like that. So what is the score of 
40 on a standardized test mean? You don't know what it means. It seems a horrible grade. You got a 40. But really, if it's the 99th percentile, it's actually a great uh, score. The 99th percentile means that you beat 99%, but 1% beat you. I'm assuming you're on the line. Okay? Q1, Q2, Q3, we already spoke about this. Q1 is the 25th percentile. You beat 25%. 75% beat you. If you're at Q2, which is the median, you beat half the people taking that test, half beat you. Q3, you beat 75%, 25% beat you. Folks, uh, we're going to show you how to use Excel to get percentiles. You usually need a big data set. You don't do percentiles, you know, unless you have several hundred observations, even millions. So uh, we're going to use the computer. We'll learn how to do this in Excel. Okay, look at problem one. Okay, n is 16. There's 16 values. We ordered it for you already. It's ordered. Lowest value is 1. The maximum value is 10. Okay, and now we want to get the mean. Well, again, you don't need to order data to get the mean, but it helps. All right, so we add the numbers all up. We're adding up 16 numbers. The sum of xi from 1 to 16, that's 65, divided by n of 16, and the mean is 4.06. The median is the middle value. You got to average the two middles since n is an even number, n is 16. So it's the average of 3 and 4. Notice the little red line there. Okay, the median is 3.5. The mode, what showed up the most, the highest frequency was 2. So the mode is 2. Q1, okay, we're using an approximation, a shortcut. Look at the eight values below the median and take the median of that. Notice, you see the little red lines? 2. Q1 is approximately 2. Do the same for the values above the median. There are eight of them, starting with four, ending with 10. You're averaging five and six, 5.5. That's the approximate Q3, 5.5. From looking at absences, we took a sample of 13 people in the company, and the absences range from zero to 12. Okay, so first we order the data. The mean, add them all up, 39 over 13, 3.0 absences. That's the sample mean. The median, Again, since it's 13 and is odd, the middle value is 2. It's red to show you that's the middle value. Mean is 2 absences. The mode, the one that showed up most, was 0. 0 absences. Q1, take all the numbers below that red 2, right? The six numbers, get the median of that. And then it's uh, 0 0.5, the average of 0 and 1. Take the six numbers above. It's the average of 4 and 5. You see the broken red line, 4.5. And these are approximate Q1 and Q3. Okay, let's look at problem three. These are reading levels. That means if you get a five, that means you're reading at the level of a fifth grader. Nine means you're reading at the level of a ninth grader. These are eighth graders, and we're looking at 16 of them. First, we order the data. Okay, it starts with five, and the highest was 10. Okay, so first, to get the mean, you want the sum. 120 over 16, 7.5. So the average reading level of the 16 students we selected randomly is 7.5, right in the middle between 7th and 8th grade. The median, again, n is even, 16. It's the average of the two middle values of 7 and 8. 7.5 is the median, okay, which, by the way, is also Q2. Approximation for Q1 and Q3, we take the numbers below the median, there are eight of them, and we take the average of the two middles, 6 and 6, so 6 is Q1, approximately, and take the, the uh, 8 numbers above the median, starting with 8 going to 10. And again, you see the broken red line. So the uh, Q3 uh, approximation is 9. The mode is the value that showed up most often, and that was a 9. Okay, we're going to revisit this problem and show you another way to do this uh, using frequency uh, data and the group data. So we'll do this problem all over again in another way but it's the same idea. This topic will be continued in the next lecture on descriptive statistics. Remember, the best way to learn this material is to do a lot of homework, find as many problems as you can, and practice, practice, practice.